All right, so I'll call this uh, meeting the order for uh, October the 2nd, 2018. Moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Delory, resolved that the agenda for the October 2nd, 2018 regular meeting of Council be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Moved by Council Morial, seconded by Councillor Delore, resolved that the minutes of the September 18, 2000 regular meeting of Council be adopted as received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? <clears throat> All right, first on our agenda is the delegation and hearings, public hearings. We have um, this is in regards to the yeah, um, to allow above ground pool three feet from the east property line. And little property uh, required is uh, five feet. So I call the hearing to order. Here, application number three, 2018. The purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against the following variation application. <coughs> to allow above ground pool three feet from the east property line in lieu of required five feet on the property located lot three, plan 38509 or 109th, 6th Avenue West, Warner, River, Manitoba. The requirements of Section 169 of the Planning Act have been adhered to. To request that any person making representation to the hearing state their name and civic address. I guess it's awkward that. Uh, <laughs> well, actually, uh, Derek, you <laughs> can have this over there. <laughs> yeah, it's it's mine. It's uh, it is a larger pool. It's coming from another property in town, so. Uh, I do have a small backyard and require a variance to, to fit it in without tearing apart my deck. So uh, that's the reason for the variance so I can fit this pool, I guess, without buying a new one in Winnipeg or a smaller one. This one's already in Swan. That's the reason. Councillor Sackle. If you talk to any of your neighbors, number 17 or 16 in the condos there, see if there's any. I guess they had a chance to come here and voice their concerns tonight, but just wondering if you just talked to them out of courtesy. Yeah, I had a meeting with them last weekend, or just a chit-chat with them in the backyard, and they don't have an issue with it. Oh, Councillor Morgan. Um, so is it just a, the uh, pool, is it just going to be in the backyard? There's no backyard fence at all that's going to be separating in there? Uh, yeah, the, I'll be required to put a fence according put to the bylaw, okay. so I'll have to put up a fence, yeah. That was actually the one issue my neighbor has. They watched to like my kids' place. So. Okay. <laughs> they weren't too happy I was putting up a fence. <clears throat> Julie? I just wanted to say I had a couple of your neighbors come in and tell me. They didn't give me their names, they just told me that they, were, they had no objection to it. That's it. Upon hearing all persons present, I adjourn this hearing. Uh, moved by Councillor Morial, seconded by Councillor Deloria, resolved that the variation application number 3, 2018, to allow an above ground pool three feet from the east property line in lieu of the required five feet of the property located on lot three, plan 38509, 109th, 6th Avenue West, Swan River, Manitoba, to be approved. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. All right, we have another hearing. <coughs> I call a hearing uh, to order the to hear the very variation application for 2018. Oh. The hearing to hear representation representation for or against the following variation application to an, allow an accessory building on a property without a main building on the property located lot 78 block 17 plan 286 or 27 or 117 121 6th avenue south swan river the requirements of section 169 of the planning act have been adhered to to request that any person making representation to the hearing state their name and civic address and is there anybody, this is, Colin, did you have anything? I can speak to it. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, the uh, request is for a uh, let's see, for us to put a 12 by 16 I guess garden shed, or, so to speak, a shed on the southeast corner of our uh, parking lot to store off-season and uh, product stored in there that we have access seldomly, but uh, we currently store it inside our food store and simply have run out of room for it to do so. So uh, it's a well-built unit built by Northern Specialties, uh, taking to mind, you know, security of the building, two by six studded frame, uh, metal roll-up door, uh, something that's not easily um, vandalized or, or uh, so yeah it's uh, meant for extra storage and uh, would be located in the southeast corner of the, that parking lot and that parcel occupying approximately two parking stalls. Uh, Councilor Morio, calling the uh, the siding of the building. You said it's a metal <laughs> roll-up door, but the siding. What kind of siding are you going to put on it? Is it, it going to be metal siding, like tin or vinyl or wood? OSB smart panel siding. That will be a engineered OSB siding. On it. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Colin. Does I have here anybody else to, to make representation on this? <coughs> anybody I just, else? I just wanted to know what it was all going to be about, basically, because like <coughs> we've got a mandate from the manufacturer that we're going to have to add two more bays. Uh, I don't see us building another building in Swan River at four and a half million dollars, right? So the two more bays are going to have to come at that side of the building, at the co-op uh, side, closer to the property line at some point, right? So. I was concerned that they were going to bang up a big, huge building there. We already got traffic issues just in that parking lot and that access to, you know, and part of it's our fault too with flat deck tow trucks dropping stuff off at after hours and, and we've got semi trucks coming in there, oil container trucks and all this kind of stuff and customers just dump their vehicles in the co parking lot, you know, on the weekends as it is, right, thinking that we're somehow, it's our parking or, or whatever, right? So. I mean, that small shed, yeah, I just thought it was going to be some huge building that's going to take off all the parking and demo to be and create more of a traffic issue than what's there already, so. All right, well, thank you. So upon hearing all persons present, I adjourn the hearing. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Morio, resolved that the variation application, order application number four, 2018, to allow an accessory building on a property without a main building on the property located on lot 7, 8, lot 17, plan 286, or 117 to 121 6th Avenue South, Swan River, Manitoba, be approved. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Which one was the one? All right, so our next uh, item is delegation right. from Chief Janai for Thank you. So, Chief, if you want to come forward. <coughs> Welcome to our council, Chief. Oh. So, council has had your uh, letter uh, uh, before them, and they have read. Um, I guess we can let you make your presentation <coughs> in reference to your letter. I guess the first time we applied, we applied for some variances. Not now or not. And uh, as I instructed by funders, they're all ready to fund a project, and uh, it's going to be a viable project for the community Swan River. And uh, unfortunately, majority of that 3.5 million. I'm going to stick with my pocket. It's going to go to uh, somebody constructing a piece of property and surrounding area. And for the benefit of uh, Town of Swan River, it's uh, opening business here for 24 hours. So to uh, also bring in economic opportunity, you know, is to create employment. 
So we, we, we met and we talked about the current bylaws in place there and, and looking at uh, the size itself, we redesigned and we're not applying for any bids at this time. And as we first bought the, the building very first time, you know, when we demoed the piece of property, you know, it cost us about uh, 250 million, you know, after you look at all the costs. And, and it was a big eyesore. And uh, when we demoed the building, as we all know, there was many layers in, in the property itself that uh, required some uh, uh, fine work with your, your town office. And, and the cement that was there was a different type of cement. So at that time, you know, and I think I was uh, Mr. Poole, along with, uh, I don't know if it was Ron that come there, we looked at it and we didn't want to incapacitate the main street and also the neighbor. So we left that, that uh, brick molding there. And we said at that time, time of construction, we'll leave it to an engineer to come and assess and tell us, because I'm not an engineer, and, and give us the expertise, see if it's just to leave it there, it would be good, and either way, it would be Sapatayak using the piece of property at a smaller scale, which we're going to be doing. So, so now with the piece of property, uh, instead of that big dig, it's going to be screw piles and uh, meet the conditions of uh, building codes and how we uh, will start business as soon as possible upon your rear to correspondence and basically uh, moving ahead, I guess. Uh, altogether, uh, as a community, probably invested less than, uh, I would say, almost a, almost a million dollars. Uh, and to uh, reinvest, we, we have lenders that are bringing in up to uh, I think it's 5.5 .5 million. So that's our best interest in this piece of property. I, I don't think that council take, you know, we, we take that uh, wholeheartedly with you that uh, our, our working relationship with Town of Swan River and Sapatoya Creation and others too, that uh, we have this good working relationship and your your investment in this community is, is definitely uh, is, is thanked upon you, so uh, make sure we want to extend that on behalf of council. So, as far as what we're talking about here today, we're talking about some of the, the concrete that is in the ground, correct? This That's is correct. Yeah. And what we're asking, what you're asking is, is that some of that concrete be left uh, where it is, right? That's per recommendations by the engineer. Yeah. Okay. I think. Uh, was that uh, information? Okay, so I think Julie has that information. Too, council so. has all the information here as far as what our bylaws are and yeah. how they covered. So I guess I can open that up for discussion uh, with council if they want to ask you questions. Or so, Council Delorier. I, I guess actually a question for Mr. Poole. Um, upon reviewing uh, Seth Wade's engineer's recommendations, do you, do you have any issue with the recommendations that were made, or do you, or what? Uh, do you have any counter recommendation or? Or what uh, what are your thoughts on on what the recommendations were? Yeah, the the town asked the did the town did ask for its opinion on the east wall for it to be assessed. I guess for it to be removed, the engineer came back with its recommendation to leave the east wall, to leave the north and the west walls as well. Uh, uh, basically, regarding the north and the west walls, since seventy five percent of uh, of it has already been removed. Uh, I I don't see a reason why why the the rest of it can can be removed and we can follow follow the zoning bylaws. Uh, I do recommend that the north and the west walls uh, adhere to the zoning bylaws, just basic basically based on precedent. I have forced a lot of uh, developers to to remove basements. Not one of them has has done it willingly and happily. It costs it costs a lot of money. But uh, if we're going to keep that bylaw in place for future development, uh, which is most of the reason why it's there. Uh, I guess the only unique thing about this property is any, any other property in town can be sold to anybody else. This is now reserved land, and it will ne it will never be sold to anybody else. It now yeah, and, belongs and to the Cree Nation. That's that is that's very true. And I guess if I, if I did, if I could make a recommendation to council if you were to. To leave this in there, that that be stated in the resolution that the reason that this was left there is because this is a reserve status property. <coughs> Council, 
Officer White? I guess my way of thinking is if the engineer said it's okay, why would we suspect or suggest other other than an engineer says it's working, it's safe? As no, opposed I, to uh, something else downtown, it might be a complete, that's apples and oranges again. I don't disagree with the engineer. There's nothing wrong with, with leaving it in other than it was against our bylaw. And when I have to enforce the bylaw in the future to people who, who need to remove their basement, they're going to have this one as a precedent going, well, you let them do it, how am I different? <clears throat> Which is why I would recommend to say that uh, you left it in there because this is a reserved status property. Councilor Delorier. Um, I guess a uh, question for Chief Janai. Um, I know your, your uh, engineer would have looked at the technical aspects, but have, have, did, did you guys also have an opportunity to speak to the neighboring property, the Watkins property, as far as uh, are they okay with uh, your, your wall still remaining against their wall? Um, I guess just to, you know, the, to extend the courtesy to make, to see what their thoughts were on the wall? I guess when I first bought the property, I did an investigation to see, you know, uh, I'm going to buy this property, I have any objections to it, I'm going to tear it down, you know, that's what they told me, you know, maybe you, don't, maybe you shouldn't. So that's why, you know, okay. the first phase was at that time. To leave it? Yeah, so okay. you know, it told me at that time you know, this is what I want to do with this property and I want to offer to buy it in the first place. Councilor Morio and Councilor White. Uh, Chief and I, um, regarding what the, the west and north walls, uh, you had previously written a letter uh, agreeing that in order to proceed with the development uh, to be issued a building permit that uh, um, you guys would be in, uh, Compliant or whatever with the existing bylaw by removing the concrete um, at that point. Uh, is there any reason why you wouldn't be wanting to do that anymore? Um, due to the fact that um, I understand that the concrete is on the edge of the property, um, but it also is on the edge of our sidewalks, our public works, utilities, and things like that. That if we do need to access um, that property uh, to bring you. Uh, services to that property and stuff like that that we could potentially maybe not this time or 30 years down the road um, come up across um, a foot of cement that uh, could potential problem so it would it would not be easier to remove that now while it's nothing on the property versus having to deal with maybe potential problems years down the road um, that's what we talked about before and as I said I'm not an engineer Let's leave it to the professional engineer to make that decision. And there's no services there coming from that area, so it's better just leave it. So it's more better structural that way. So engineer said it was fine, and that's what he said we're going to go with. So. And it's going to be screw piles, so if you're not an engineer on what screw piles mean. It's, it's not digging this big crater again. I understand what yeah. screw piles are. So basically, that's the construction um, of it. It's just that. The community has been caught um, a number of times by finding out issues that were kicked, like kicked the can down the road <coughs> from 30 years past as an effort to save money or whatever decisions were made at that time just to find out that uh, it creates further issues um, in the future. Um, well, it, it's, it's reserved now and I don't think be going back to what it was before. Unless, of course, you're offering me a lot of money to buy it back. <laughs> you know, I'm willing to sit down. And <laughs> so, so, are, so are you saying that uh, the letter that we have on file from uh, Sapoyak, that uh, they are no longer willing to remove that as what they agreed to in that original letter in order to get a building permit? Well, it's going back to the letter I gave you now. I don't know, but there's a previous one that we have on file when it, this issue first came up yeah. that, uh, and I believe it was penned by yourself or signed by yourself, that uh, you fully agreed that uh, the cement would be along the north and west side would be removed in order to obtain building permits. If we get a proper engineer to come and assess and say it's okay or not. So we do have that report uh, that, now. That so. would be on the east side of the wall, with, uh, but there was no comment for the, the north and west. When regarding engineers, when the inspection did came up, when Ron Poole came there, we looked at it. Now was at that time. So, 
Council White. Bylaws can be changed, obviously one, but two, why is there a bylaw that people have to take their cement out, it, or basements out, are they all faulty after, and, and why would you treat every basement the same, because they're not all the same. We, we've run into a number of, well, even for example a derelict building where it has to be torn down, yeah. say that even the town gets a tax sale, with uh, uh, if you demolish a building, most people just want to cover it up. And then they sell that, say you're going to buy a house in town and, and build a, a property up, or build, sorry, build a house on that property. Now you've just incurred an extra twenty to thirty thousand dollars by removing their basement they didn't take care of in order to build your basement for your new house. So you're just incurring those costs for future. So I would agree with you completely with all that you've explained, but in this instance, this is no longer our land. It's, it's, it's the community's land, your community's land. So that's never going to come back to haunt us, and that, that's to me is the answer to the question. Yeah, the the main reason for that bylaw would be would be that for future yep. future development, and uh, I'm pretty sure through talks with uh, Chief Janai that, that they have no intention on putting it back to the off reserve status. Councilor Sack. So I'm just trying to get this straight. The services that will be coming into the property, well, I guess I'll direct it to, to Derek, more so, uh, the, the wall won't affect any of that? Uh, if the services are coming off of 6, there's still 15 feet of basement wall from the Main Street uh, intersection down 6th Avenue South and then the entire Main Street wall. So I haven't seen the plans through the new building. But if the if the water and sewer services are south of that basement wall, there there won't be an issue. If they need to connect into Main Street or that 15 feet buried uh, on the north side of Sixth Avenue South, uh, we'll have to we'll have to destroy that concrete either way. So, who incurs that cost if that is the case? Sapatoya will incur the cost. The owners will incur the cost. So other than possible, I guess, uh, services that you would need to look up for a water sewer. Is there any other reason besides just what the bylaw says that you see that those would cause any problem? Just, just to reiterate what Councillor Morio said, there could be, I don't know what potential problems uh, uh, could be in the future, but I can't think of any, anything other than, like I say, future development <coughs> problems. <coughs> All right, well, if that's everything, then, uh, Chief, then that will conclude that, and, and uh, Council will have further discussion on it and make a final decision, and we'll let you know as far as where that will go from here. If you have anything else to add. Uh, uh, I don't know when the cement was being torn down. There was no services on the Main Street or even the neighbor's property. They came off the 6th. So. Off the 6th? Yeah, and on the back, the back of the alley. Okay. So, okay. so the cement wouldn't be an issue at all. Okay. And for future businesses, you know, uh, if there is going to be federal or provincial surplus property, uh, I'll make sure you know, uh, terms and conditions are at my note before we actually buy it. Because we are looking to buy property in uh, Rossburn and uh, Grandview, you know, federal surplus property. So it's, it's business we're doing, right? So, yeah. And uh, as a community, uh, I'm doing fiber optics now, which is in the 270 million. And I do have private ventures here with uh, private owners that want to tap into the hospital for that basic purpose. And that itself keeps me busy. pretty busy. I bet. And I'm trying to develop this to keep on going. <laughs> you know, business in the world, uh, since I got in as chief, you know, it's about, about 100 million. You know, so that's what I do. So. You're a busy guy, and we thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, take care. All right, so uh, moving on, uh, uh, where are we here? July meetings? No, of course, I'm mm -hmm. item five. Oh, sorry. Uh, correspondence, Swan Valley Animal Protection League. Uh, you all see that there in their recommendation as far as 
possibility of them hiring or recruiting uh, two full-time animal protection people. Um, we did have a discussion last night at the G5 uh, in regards to this and, and how vague it might be. So there was a discussion as far as uh, each of the municipalities uh, appointing a representative uh, from that council to attend with the Animal Protection League to, uh, to find out a little bit more about what this will really mean for uh, the whole valley as, as a whole. So um, I guess if, every, if anybody wants to discuss it further or uh, we appoint somebody that will sit on that uh, committee. Or if you'll just leave it for me. Ryan, I mean, considering we may not be here, maybe we'll leave it to you for until after the election. As I recall, Your Worship, you did volunteer to do that. Actually, I didn't volunteer. I said I would take care of it, but appointing okay. somebody. <laughs> well, I didn't hear the latter part. So, you're suggesting that possible that this wouldn't even happen till after the election? Within the next three weeks, I know. Okay. If it if it happens sooner, does somebody want to? I think it would be prudent that anything scheduled be after the election so that uh, you have continuity in the discussion okay. what goes on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then I guess then uh, that's what we'll do is uh, I'll let the other municipalities know that uh, this decision from this council is that it will uh, appoint somebody from the new council after uh, October the 24th. Um, before we move on, on item 4.3, is there a resolution coming to the table tonight regarding uh, regarding uh, Saptoyek's presentation? There is not. There's not? We, um, Derek and I spoke about it, but we just weren't sure what type of resolution to write up. So we thought if you wanted to do a resolution, we would, we would definitely yeah. write yeah. one for yeah. you tonight. Yeah. Council is willing to do a resolution tonight on that. And if that's the wish, then yeah, we just we'll do that. We just weren't sure of, we weren't sure of the wording to put in the motion. Okay. Okay. Councilor Delorier. I guess do we want to deal with if there is a resolution going to come? Do we want to deal with it now while while Chief's still here so we can carry sure. on with his evening? Okay. So I guess what does that resolution look like? Then? Well, I guess we've got the request to leave the concrete in the ground. What? So, I really just. I, I guess my only concern, if, if the engineer says it's okay, my only concern would be right now by the pictures, it looks like it's capped off with some flashing. Is that, would that be how we would want to leave it permanently? I, unless we get something different from the engineer, the, the, the recommendation was to leave it as is. So if we were to alter that to take it to say ground level, uh, I don't know why we could run that by the engineer, but uh, if that's what you were implying. But I, I guess, and I, I remember when, when uh, Mrs. Watkins was here uh, a few months ago, she had mentioned something about, about going below, taking that below grade if it ended up staying. I'm just trying to remember back to, that, to the point she had made on that. Well, you know what, uh, in, in fairness, Louise is here tonight and she is a neighbor and the resolution does affect her to some degree and I, and I, and I think it would be if it's the will of counsel to maybe at least hear if, if she, uh, what her feelings are about that as well. If I'm allowed to speak, uh, we do have a letter on file as well, requesting both the Salvatore and the town on a timeline for when that foundation would be removed. And we were open to removing it to a level just slightly below grade. The flashing is a temporary solution, um, which is something we put to protect our building until they had time to decide on their development. So it is in our best interest to remove that foundation to at least grade level, and that is a letter on file previously. So it would be nice to consider that in your thought process for your recommendation. So perhaps then the course of action should be that we ask uh, Derek to send a letter to Sapporo's engineer asking him about the feasibility of, of not removing the wall but just taking it down to grade level because again by the pictures it doesn't look the best like, with the flashing over the concrete like that. I would imagine it would be much more aesthetically pre pleasing to bring it down to grade level. 
Um, so that that probably that'd be my suggested course of action that we get Derek to, to write a letter to uh, or to get in contact with uh, Safety Waves engineer and see if he can if if modifying his recommendation would be okay. I can. I guess I can ask the question. If he comes back saying leave as is, then like that's a, that's that's what his initial recommendation mm -hmm. was. He might just do that, and that is that is what I would recommend council to do. Okay. If okay. if you're sticking to an engineer, I guess if that's his recommendation in terms of concrete, that still doesn't fulfill the commitment of a neighbor's uh, understanding because, as you said, uh, when bylaws are written and properties are sold and we're under the impression going on good faith that the town is going to adhere to those bylaws and the bylaws states complete removal of the foundation so as a concession we're already allowing them to leave that in and would like it removed to ground level so if you just base it on what can be done by one engineer's opinion, I don't think it fulfills all the requirements uh, for satisfying <coughs> construction and neighbors' uh, understanding of rules. And our biggest concern is when water comes and melts down between our building and theirs and the remnants actually on all three sides. Now you have underground water that's getting diverted to directions that you don't know and they could be cooling under our building or somebody <coughs> else's area because now you have like a dam underneath the soil that you cannot check uh, on a routine basis and that is the big concern of leaving any foundation in. So I, I guess if, if it's the World Council there can contact uh, uh, ED engineering and Dauphin and, and, uh, and see what uh, what the feasibility of, of taking that down to grade would be. And then we'll hear back, I guess, in uh, recent council, years back. Councilor Sackle. That just delays the project that much longer in my mind. Like if the engineer says no, just leave it. Or if he says yeah, we'll move it to grade level. Either way, the project's probably going to go through because we have a you know, if we decide that we're okay with the north and the, and the west wall, so can we not make that decision? Or let them write it so that we follow the engineer's recommendation. I'm not an engineer, but, but if he recommends it's fine, then who am I to argue? It's been outstanding for two years already, so there has been plenty of time to address the issue in my mind prior to delaying a construction date and permit if I get comment, you know, and I was discussed when we bought the property, like a proper engineer, I'm an engineer, come assess it and tell you and tell me, we paid for the cost itself, you know, with the business plan, and that's something to make seven, you know, the 10 million annually, so it's already been a year now, so if you delay again, I'm trying to construct well, it's still good to construct, and then that should be ready by next week. Uh, tenders out to uh, companies, electrical company plumbers, and USB installers, and they're basically gonna tell me it's all ready to go, and my plumber is all ready to go. So that's where it's at. So what's the will? I'd like to. I'd like to see information on removing a blue grade. Is there a cost for that? What does that cost? Ballpark, is there such a number in your mind? Five grand, ten yeah, grand, five, five thousand bucks. To remove it to blue grade? No, to get the opinion would be a couple thousand dollars. Could the two property owners come to some kind of consensus with that? They've had two years and it hasn't happened, so I, I think we need to see what the engineer says about we'll removing, maybe, maybe he never considered removing we'll just a below grade. Yeah, I guess we, I guess in the, in the sense of that, like, what's what's next? What's, uh, what, 
once they do this, what else are we going to get? Is there anything else, any other concerns that we need to tell the engineer that that Sabatoya will have to? I'm okay with leaving the, the north and the and the uh, west wall underground. They're already underground. It's their property. I'm fine with that. I'm just concerned for the neighbor. What's if, if, if there's only two feet sticking up above ground? It, it's it's not. Council Sacco. I just don't know why I didn't get asked of the engineer last time. You know, Sabatoya was asked to get an engineer to see if it was fine. In my mind, they did, and they said it was fine, so now why are we going to argue it again? Right. But to re you're, you're saying that we have uh, concrete that comes up about two feet above grade, and that is a, a width of a, what, 12 feet? No. Well, we, we did ask them because in the resolution we provided on uh, uh, back in July, it says uh, Sapodwe Cree Nation provided an engineer's recommendation on the removal or modification below grade of the east wall. So we asked for this. Well, you recommended looking at it. That two years it hasn't flooded the neighbor's property yet, you know. We've had water in our basement twice. Uh, and even when that whole property was there, there was a lot of water in that valley hotel when we dealt with it. So we didn't get a recommendation on the removal or the modification. The recommendation was to leave it where it was. So we didn't get what we asked for back in July. All right, so we have to move on this. So what do we want to do? I would like Derek to talk to Darren Eady and ask what, what would we need to do to get it below grade. Uh, Chief, tonight, do you have like do you have objection to removing that to below just like below grade as uh, if it, if the engineer concurs that there's no issue with that? That's what the contractor is building as is. I have the plans on what the building is going to look like, and the way it's building it, it's on screw piles and it's always not interfere with the neighbor itself. So either or, regardless. Uh, it's being constructed in a way that we're not going to interfere yeah. with but the, 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 currently there's a concern from the neighbor about leaving it there um, as a good neighbor do you have any objections of removing it below grade to improve neighborly relations I, I don't have no objections what I did is I did say is have the engineer tell us it's okay to leave it there and he recommended just basically just leaving it there it's not there so. it's like opening a can of worms right what are you going to open when you open it yeah. But what Councilor Glory is saying is that the request that we've asked for the engineer is not addressing what we requested. And the owner also has submitted a request to the town and to Sapatoya, clearly outlining those issues as well prior to today. So they've had several months to respond and they haven't. And it was basically if you're saying a contractor can come in and pack up their bags whenever they want to leave and we're supposed to accept the condition that they leave the site. That's not right because the site's supposed to be clean, finished, packed up, done according to code and it wasn't. So now you're asking us to just live with what the original contract, it's not Savage Way's fault, it's the original contractor didn't complete their job. So basically it is like you're requesting is that it brought below grade so we're not you're not saying to go and dig out the entire thing, bring it below grade Correct. and if there's flashing material, whatever that's necessary in there, then so be it. Right. So if that's the question that we're gonna be sure. asking, go ahead. I guess we're not we're obviously probably not unanimous on this, so I'll put a motion forward that we direct the council direct there to talk to uh, uh. and uh, and get get what it would take to get that below grade. Okay. And I guess we'll put it to a vote. I guess if I have a seconder, I don't know. Second everybody going. Can we We, to me, there's two issues are here. We there have, is. We got the, the wall, the east wall is one issue, and then we got the north and west cement as another 
to me is another issue. So I think we need two separate resolutions to deal with. Yeah, I think we matters. can deal with those tonight. discussing any permits as far as construction permits go because we don't have that before us. Um, you, you've already heard from members of council saying that they're probably more than likely willing to accept the cement in, left in the ground on the west and the north. Yeah. I think that the last part that the resolution is going to find is that it's more to do with the aesthetics of, of that piece of concrete that's coming out of the ground and that your neighbor would rather have that brought down to grade level it has nothing to do with us uh, rejecting what your your purpose is or what you would like to have uh, invested in that area not in any way at all and don't so, get don't get us wrong okay so, so is it on my property or is it on her property uh you would imagine it's on your, your it's on your property, property. Yeah. and it's on reserve land <clears throat> If it's on reserve land, it's not on town land, right? Um, it's not on land. So are those applicable? I guess it's on reserve it, I land guess if, it is? I guess if it's, I don't know. So that's a good question. And I don't know. It, it would be because we're based, that's where the permit comes back into play. It's, it's, it's all based on that bylaw. And you, you have, According to the agreement, the town bylaws have to be conformed to in order for us, including building permits. And the correspondence to this point has said that we, we would not issue a building permit unless you conform to the bylaws. So this is where we're trying to we're trying to find a way through the bylaws to make everybody happy, including Sabatoy, to get this thing going. Because we, they, you know. I believe I can speak for council when I say they want development, but I will let them uh, speak for themselves. But just to try and shine a light on on, on that. So if you get an, another report, right, the same engineer, <laughs> you know, it's a bit more clear on basically asking that. So. Councilor White. I think because this is treaty land, that bylaw, in my mind, doesn't apply. The reasons for that bylaw, that's explained well by you, that makes sense to me. But it's their land, and if they want to leave it in the ground, it's not a town's property. I don't know why we're having this discussion. You're right. Our brothers really don't apply on the land. <coughs> but the the service agreement we have with them says, states that they will follow our bylaws in order to get the services that we would provide them. But the bylaw doesn't apply, in my mind, to this instance. The outstanding issue has been the same issue. We absolutely want them to develop. It's been the same issue I've been asking for two years, and it's been outstanding since before it was claimed treaty land. This is the same issue. It's not a new issue. We're not trying to stall any kind of development. 
remove the foundation. The bylaws says we put it right down to the ground. We, we don't need them to go down eight feet. We just want them to turf it at ground level. So it never was treaty land when the problem came up. We were told at the time when the purchase was there that those bylaws and foundations were being removed. So if you go back on your word now, this was our impression for the past two to three years of what was supposed to happen. So there's the dilemma of why the bylaw is there, in my mind. If that can explain it clearer from my point of view. We absolutely want development. We want this project, we want a thriving business next door, we want good neighbors. Not the issue at all. It's been the tardiness of getting this one particular aspect completed. That's all I'm asking. Okay, so moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Delorier. Resolved that, that Sapatoya Cree Nation remove the concrete, sorry. Resolved that Sapatoya Cree Nation remove the concrete along Main Street and 6th Avenue South on the property located at 703 Main Street. Okay. So this is one to remove the north and the west. Right. This is, this is to... Okay. So you're saying in that resolution that they have to remove mm -hmm. the cement in the north and the west. Right. right. That's what I want. So all in favor? And a recorded vote on two, please. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? So they do not have to remove the north and the west one then. So the east one is the only one in contention. And that's the one we want him to let us. Yes. What would it cost to do that? What are we talking about? Well, Best guess. What happens if they remove that and then all of a sudden they find structural damage on the other building? Then we're opening up another can of worms. Well, why should we have structural damage from somebody else demolishing the building? The engineer thought it was out? fine the way it was. That's what I have a problem with. They said okay. it's good. We don't know if it's fine. He did an outside. Well, let me read the report. He did an outside inspection. He didn't drill holes. All right. So. Um, yeah. Okay, so moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor White. Resolve that Council Direct Superintendent of Works to, uh, to contact the Engineer Edifice, Engin Engineering Incorporated, to get a recommendation on removing the concrete to grade level on the property located at 703 Main Street. So this is not asking for a report, this is asking for advice. Which he will give in a report, which he will charge. Or, or, I gotta ask a question: or, Is the town paying for this, or is Sapatoya paying for this? Not <clears throat> Sapatoya is paying for it. What happens if the report comes back the same and he suggests leaving it? Then we pay for it, because that's what they told him last time. But the report does not address uh, our request for a recommendation for the removal or modification of the... Well, if, if we're paying for the report, I'd want to hire our own engineer then. I'm just saying, if the engineer comes back and says the same thing, yeah. why should he pay for two reports? Well, you're, you're right, you shouldn't have to. Uh, so then, if I guess if we're paying for it, then, uh, then I'd want to hire our own engineer. I just have a question, you know, why you want to hire an engineer to come my property and check to see if it's good to go to the grade or not? You know, it's just a waste of money for me. Not quite a thinking. And, you know, it's there right now, it's structural. And if you open it all up, then what happens if the town is water again in the direction to open it up and it damages their property and something happens and who's responsible? I don't want to be responsible for that. That happens. I uh, personally, I, I feel that hiring also hiring a, another or a, a, another engineer and, and and spending money doing it, maybe we will get the same thing again. I, I just I kind of wish, and I think I go back to what I said earlier. It's almost like it's something that the two property owners should come to some kind of consensus with, instead of the the council uh, making more. Uh, this is why people pay taxes to, and 
put us here to make bylaws to govern these sort of things. We have a bylaw. We have an obligation to our existing ratepayer to. We're bending by just doing this. So, I guess if, if we're not willing to do this, then the alternative is to take the whole thing out, and then the person taking the whole thing out is liable for any damage. All right. But we have we have an obligation to existing taxpayers that have paid taxes here for. Yeah, that building's probably been here 50 years. 50 years of taxes have been paid on that building, and now we're going to leave them high and dry. All right. Well, any other further discussion? Uh, it's an issue of tax taxpayers. You know, uh, we're paying that right now as it is, and not losing anything. And when we talk about uh, goods and services in, in the town of Swatter, you know, my community brings in annually probably about six million as a community that brings in money to the town of Swatter. Not one person or one household, it's roughly six to seven million that we bring into this town swarm. So when you look at viability, you know, who sustains what and how do we sustain I, I, it? I, I don't think the point was that about paying taxes and, and whatever. I think it's more to do with the bylaws and who we represent and we res, you know, represent everybody. I think that's the point that Councillor Sad Deloria was making. I haven't seen the town's request, but if it is, as uh, Councillor Mario had uh, read out saying that you asked for some particulars and they weren't clarified in the report, I think a simple phone call to the engineer for him to clarify the gaps in his report would come from him uh, in the same fee that he's already charged you and it may be resolved quickly with a phone call and a follow up uh, written blurb signed by him and I really don't think it would incur cost if you ask for clarity on the request. I'm in the construction business. That would be a professional thing to do that he's accountable for. I don't think any cost would be incurred because you originally asked for that information. I, I do think that's a good idea that we can just ask to clarify because I think he will come back with the answer. I did exactly as you asked. I, re I recommend it on the removal or the mod modification and I recommend you don't do either. So if that's his answer, that's his answer, but we can call him to clarify. <clears throat> okay, let's do that. So do you want to vote on this resolution? Well, if council is willing to allow Derek to call for clarification then. I personally am for that. Yeah, I am too. What kind of time frame? I don't you should be able to hear that. Well, yeah, I can call the office tomorrow. Okay, and then if he says he still recommends we don't do anything, then where are we left? then I think that we'll have to cross that bridge when we we'll get there. So this, this pushes uh, Chief Janai's project back another two weeks then. I think we're at the bridge because we asked that question. Okay, so then you want to vote on this resolution then? Well, this resolution's been solved because Council just gave Derek the okay to go and do what this resolution said. So if the engineer does not uh, does not uh, say that, you know, or says that you can't remove it down below grade level or whatever, then that'll, that'll, we'll have to deal with that, Chief. Well, he's not going to say that we can't. I'm asking him to clarify his report. And what do you want? Do you want his opinion on what happens if we cut this down to grade level? Or do you want me to clarify his report where we all know the answer and he's going to say, I recommend you do not to touch it. So don't. <clears throat> so if that's the case, if he says, you know, just leave it as is, and, and that's it. I don't want to come back here over and over again and basically come and ask are you going to let me build or not. So I'm coming to a point, you know, uh, if you're not going to let me build, buy the property back, buy what I would have lost it for, and, and buy the loss of use of it, then I could buy another property that I have a better property owner that wants to sell me an existing business that's the same business. So that way, I don't think I the town is interested in buying the property back. So, uh, we can develop it then <laughs> something. Well, we're, we're going to come to some resolve on this council. Uh, I would just like to know what the original request read. What did we ask for? That Sapatoya Cree Nation provide an engineer's recommendation on removal or modification below grade of the east wall and the said recommendation be binding upon Sapatoya Cree Nation to carry out. We asked the engineer to come and take a look at it and assess it all. And is it good to just leave it there as it is? And he 
just started unpacking them. You took it as you said, just leave it as is. So if the engineer, so when, if it comes back and the engineer says the same thing and then leave it as that, then council's going to have to make a decision if that's what they're going to accept. Well, yeah, I think you can take that motion there. now today, so I don't have to come back here again because I. Every time drawings are done, you know, I'm spending this last drawing on the construction to downsize it from 15 to where it is right now, cost me $65,000. You could have hired me and I'd have done it for less. $65,000. <laughs> okay, so what do we want to do here, guys? Well, somebody else better make a motion then. Put a motion on the table so if you're willing to keep it like it is. If Derek calls, then it changes. Do we have to meet to okay? Do we have to, could we call an extra meeting just to get us all together? We can call a special meeting. I, That's reasonable. I, I really think if you run it by them, what the issue is, and it's not going to cost anybody any money, and then we can just phone Nelson, and he doesn't have to come back in, and, you know, let's make it simple. We're not inventing the wheel here. Reinvent. Yeah, that too. All right. I'm for that. So, Chief, are you okay with that? So, you're going to give uh, Eddie a call and he tells you just leave it as it is, and you're going to be okay with that? Then no, then we're going to have to vote on that. Oh, so but that means I'm going to have to wait for it, and I'll be another 10 days. No, it won't be. We're we're gonna, we'll, 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 we'll have to call a special meeting of our own here. So. Well, like I say, if you vote on it at that time to say you deny your application to construct it, then what? We're not denying an application for construction. Well, we are because his application to construct is based on the resolution of these concrete walls. Yeah, so you're not going to be denying so, me. And I, no, I'm not going to be able to construct. So this building permit does depend on what decision we make here tonight. <coughs> what happens if we put a resolution on the table then, or if I put one on that said, after talking with the engineer, he finds it to be good the way it is, like the original port, doesn't think that it should be removed further below grade, that we approve it. But that's exactly what he's saying in his report, that it's fine as it is, but there's a debate with the neighbor that, and based on our request, is that would it be, a, is there, would there be any issues of it having been removed below grade and causing any structural <coughs> issues? Because his current report says to leave it as it is. And that's where I left my expertise. I'm not an engineer. An engineer tells me just leave it as is, and it's the best way to do it. And I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. Uh, uh, so it doesn't matter if I who says we you want to pay to remove that. It's going to cost twenty five thousand dollars. And does the neighbor want to pay to remove it to make it look better? And then it which is on my property, <laughs> then it doesn't make sense. But it should have been done in the first place, and you were going to leave. The Wall, that okay, well, we can't we can't get into debate here. So, are you going to bring forth a resolution then, so we can get on? I would, yeah. I, I don't like I said. I'm not an engineer. If the engineer says it's fine. I don't know why we're going to hold up a project. So, you're putting a resolution for tonight then to uh, follow the engineer's recommendation and allow the wall to remain. And absolve them, uh, absolve Saptawake of having to remove. Uh, well, concrete. if you're going to phone, if you're going to phone the engineer for clarification, and if he says what he says in his report, just reiter reiterates it, then yeah, that's what I. Ask so does the resolu resolution state? Did I, did I ask for clarification on the report in the case that the engineer uh, agrees to his already done recommendation? I can immediately talk to Chief Janai and tell him to move forward, or do we do we then meet again? Well, this is what this resolution is going to deal with. <coughs> can I get to that question? Derek, you have no number in your mind. There's two things. One, if you make it below grade, does that jeopardize the uh, stability of that cement at all? 
Go ahead. No, it shouldn't. It would okay. be a dream. The second question today of a ballpark figure, 100,000, 10,000 to do it. To take out the. To get it below grade. I think it'd be. Uh, Best guess. To guess. 10 grand. It's almost preference, I guess. I think once you start disturbing it, you move it below grade, and then you can open up more issues with water because now it's that much below. Water's going to run right over it. I, it would be worse by myself, but I'm not an engineer, and I don't know these things. My, my thoughts exactly, because I thought if you do remove down below grade, then you'd have to have some flashing over it for sure. I don't know. Cracks in the wall already, though, so there's opportunity for water to get between those foundations. So that's it's not just the below grade to for the height of it, it's because there are cracks and you're already leaving the water getting from the side. His last paragraph of his recommendation says if Sapatuac Cree Nation is considering the removal of this piece of wall to appease the owners of 705, it would need to be. Before the construction of the new building, to do, um, due to access and potentially undermining the new structure foundation in the future, it would be my recommendation that a meeting be called between Sapatoa Cree Nation and the owner of 705 with a consultant arbitrator to discuss what would occur if the wall is removed and who may be responsible for what costs during and following the removal. It is unknown what conditions of the foundation at 705 is, but once exposed, would provide the opportunity to the 705 owners to install insulation, waterproofing, drainage systems, and are currently required by code and only benefit their building. It would be up to them to look at upgrade their upper wall systems to code compliant and may need Sabatoy Creek Nation's permission to conduct that work from 703 property. So, oh, so he's already given his what do you think should happen if we do touch that wall? So Not much point, Derek Foney. He's already said what how it should go. Yeah. Do we have a resolution? Oh, we'll have to change it now because we don't need to. I need to direct uh, Derek to call. So, so what do you want the resolution to say? No. I guess put one on, put one on the table that the wall should be allowed to stay.
get a seconder over here. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Sacco, resolved that the concrete wall located on 703 Main Street East remain standing as recommended in the report provided by Edifice Engineering Incorporated. Further discussion? Yeah, I think uh, anybody who's considering in voting in favor of this, it's, we're not doing the right thing. People. We made, we made bylaws that we expected everybody to, to, to adhere to, and we letting down our, our ratepayers by not enforcing them. Uh, we made, we, people believe that we will enforce them in good faith, that when their big neighbor ne next to them goes to do a construction project, it'll be done according to the town's bylaws, and here we're gonna be letting down uh, our citizens. And don't get me wrong, in this, Chief and I, I want you to know, I want your project to go ahead. I want to see something there, but it's got to be done right. So yeah. that, I guess that's all I have to say. I, I totally welcome your development in town. I totally welcome your investment in our community. So this is not against investment. It just needs to be done right. Councillor Sacco. I guess I'll argue against a little bit. We've shown tonight that we've created a variance or, or amended a bylaw tonight, and we amend them all the time. Like, unfortunately, every issue is different this is on his property yes it's it's unique it, it, it's terrible that it's come to this far uh, we've asked for an engineer report the engineer reported on it he says it's fine leave it uh, how many times do we see variances we get variances all the time do we just say no we're not going to give a variance that's what the bylaw says we're never going to change is it that way or no way so i don't think voting in favor of this is is going against our taxpayers we have different how many variances? I can't even think of how many we've given. How many of the projects that wouldn't have went through if, if we don't adjust our bylaws? Not every bylaw is applicable for every single one. There's unique cases, and sometimes, unfortunately, we have to make a hard decision. We've asked for an engineer's so advice. I'm an engineer. I have no clue if this is right or wrong, but I'm going by what the engineer says because that's what he got paid to do his report on. Councilor Delorier. Let's put this in another perspective. Let's say the west wall had stayed above ground and we were looking at two feet of, of concrete sticking up right beside the sidewalk in no man's land. Would we would be making them take take it down? I think that's another unique another unique piece for one. Uh, it's not it's right on a sidewalk. This isn't. So to me that's different again. And and also to that point as well is that the, the concrete wall that's there can, if it was had to be removed entirely, could uh, have some repercussions as far as the neighboring the wall uh, of the neighbor. So I think it's a big situation there as far as if you're going to have to force somebody to remove that whole cement wall, what's that going to mean for the structure of the, of the basement to the neighbor to the east? So it's not an easy dis uh, decision to, to be making. Why? I think the bylaws are there for reasons. They're for reasons for 99% of our population. This is a completely unique situation. If I take my house down and I want to sell it, and it's torn out, yeah, I've got to take care of my basement because the next guy's got to build the basement. But this is treaty land. This is not mainstream societies down there land. They have the right to do what they want with their land. If he wants to leave it there, and it's not going to come back, nobody else is going to buy that land. We're not going to have to worry about another person coming on to it as opposed to protecting, I think it's the way we are protecting our people. We're saying we made an exception because it was treaty land. If it was another piece of treaty property, I would do the same. As opposed to your house burns down, I say, well, you got to take your basement down. It's a different situation completely. Council Moria. Uh, just to rebut that, um, <coughs> these conditions and these issues were being debated and then <coughs> being investigated uh, before this property became treaty land. And there was, there's letters on file that, uh, based on the bylaws, that concrete would be removed when this was still Thomas Swan River land 
owned by Sakai uh, Nation before it was treaty led. So, so this is an issue that stems prior to it. That. Council of Delorey. I, I think you're, you're right, Dwayne. This is treaty land, and they can do whatever they want. Chief and I really is only here out of a courtesy to us. He can go and start building tomorrow. He doesn't need our okay. You can, you, can, you can go start building tomorrow if you want. But they, he, but Chief Janai entered into agreement with us that he would follow our bylaws in return for us providing water, sewer, garbage pickup, fire protection, police protection, <laughs> all the services that we pr provide. So I guess, are we, are we telling them that they do not have to follow our bylaws? Because he, he's waiting on a building permit right now. He doesn't have to be waiting on a building permit. I think we're telling him we think we have a, he has a wonderful cause. He's going to employ 30, 40 people. He's going to spend $30 million, whatever the number is, in our town and our community. is going to gain a heck of a lot because of a, a small variance in a bylaw. And I don't think we've been every bit of bylaw legislation we have. We get quotes on projects. We pay more. We buy out of town. We buy in town. We bend the expectations every day based on the merit of the individual occurrences. And I don't want to see this thing slow down anymore. We're, yeah, no, sorry. So, uh, <coughs> that's any other discussion? Uh, Recorded vote, please. We need again. Okay. So, resolve that the concrete wall located on 703 Main Street East remains standing as recommended in the report provided by Edifice Engineering Incorporated. Any further discussion? If I may. Yeah. Would it be, would it be a good idea to add my recommendation that this that this, uh, I don't know, I can't, for lack of words, uh, going against the bylaw, we're going through with this thing because this is on reserve status land, be in the resolution. Well, I would, that would be up to the, the mover and the seconder. To me, if it's reserve land, our land, public's land, to me, it doesn't matter. It's, it's 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 their land they own it and i don't care if he owned it or she owned it if i seen the engineer's recommendation saying to do it, it wouldn't make a difference to me that that shouldn't even be a okay so i'm going to ask for the vote time record vote please okay all in favor opposed it is defeated by a tie Now, now they got to remove it. Uh, um, I don't think the question was to remove it. I think the question was there to the check and ask uh, Eddie what's the difference if he remove it or just leave it. And it's probably going to be the same question. I mean, same answer. And I think this was the low rate. Who's going to be liable? Is it the town? Is it uh, the neighbor that wants it? Or is it ours? And that's where the liability comes into play. You know? If you're forcing us to remove it, then it costs. How much does it buy? Uh, the property value that? If it's, if it's value at that, is the town going to be responsible for that? That's going to be a question I'm having right now. If you're asking to remove it and it comes back, what was it about you? The building collapses. And I, I'm, I'm going to go back to what I, and I, I'm, maybe I'm speaking on a turn, but um, I'm going to go back to we, we already have a resolution allowing you to leave concrete in the ground yeah. on the north and the west. Yeah. So I believe that the same would almost be true for the, the concrete on the east, but I think that the only thing that stands in the way of everything there is is to appease the property owner by bringing it to grade what they're asking and I think that if and I could be wrong but council will correct me on it but if if that is a, uh, a resolution that between the two can come to terms on I think that that probably might be acceptable so the 
and the engineer's recommendation on bringing it below grade was to get a binding, what did you call it, a binding consultant? Arbitrary. Arbitrary. I forgot to allow an arbitrary piece of it. Unfortunately, a lot of them laws. It's recently a kind of lecture from both parties because it does cost money to move through that process. And at the end of the timeline, it does come to say uh, you should elect it that the person who was asked to make that opposition, of course, they case for it. The portion above ground is not structural integrity at this point. The, the part, we're not asking to disturb anything below ground that would affect structural integrity. They have a deep foundation which goes beyond eight feet because they have a basement. That section of our building as a shallow foundation. So the part above ground is actually um, right now preventing us from insulating and allowing cold air to come through and we have a fresh air vent there. So even as it stands, if it is left, then we're going to have to have some cost in order to insulate that area because it's not good. Right now, before the Valley Hotel was adjacent, provided lots of heat, lots of warmth, big building. It's not there anymore. So it is a, a new condition, and the part above ground isn't structural. However, it does affect our structural in the same way that if you wanted to repair something on Main Street, you said, and had to access the ser service through the basement, now the concrete's in the way. So if we need to repair our building, then it will cost us to go through their foundation to get at our building. So it is putting us in the same position as you by leaving it there. So I, I don't know how much clearer I can make it, and I think you guys have hashed it out, but I don't know if you know all those details. And I do appreciate the fact that you're taking this much time to consider it. However, to me, it still should have been cut and dry. Should have been taken out over two years ago. There would have been no issue. And they had that dug right down. The cost was already in in there. It would have been absolved. It would be no extra cost. Well, I we, we voted on the resolution. So if there's no other uh, further discussion on it, then. Our meeting is going to carry on. Okay, so uh, we're moving on to our uh, next part of the correspondence to the meeting. Uh, Swan Valley Animal Protection League. I've got my orders from you as far as what that's going to mean into the new term. Uh, RCMP D Division letter. We have there indicating an invitation, I guess, to meet with uh, the RCMP. Uh, during the AMM, and I'm sure that probably council and the new council probably will want to be meeting with the RCMP. So, if that's something that we have to put a request in for, we should probably do that. I'll we'll need a list of items that you want to discuss. Okay. Did you want to get that list to me now, or did you want to wait? We we'll probably email it over the next couple of days to you. Okay. Councilor Sackle. Um, I'm not trying to disrespect the chair, but shouldn't we give some sort of a idea of where we go from here with Mr. I, I know it's, 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 it's in the air. I, I don't know what else more to say. Like, right now, the official position of the Town of Swan River is what's in the bylaw. That's to remove it. So unless some departments bring another resolution for it to say to do something else. Like I left, I left that there to say, like, if you want to have a, a resolution to if it's to bring that portion that the neighbor had asked to have it brought back to grade, then that could be a discussion that could be had between them and and it could be probably resolved. But right now, like Councilor uh, Deloria says, what is in the books right now is that it has to be completely removed. I'll, I'll put a resolution on there to, to bring it down to grade. I'll vote for that. Good. Okay. You want to write up another resolution, Julie? Thank you. 
So while she's writing on going on with that, we'll just kind of continue her before we get to that. So uh, a letter from MIT, uh, we finally got that report from them, which is uh, uh, encouraging. Of course, as you've seen in the report, that uh, with the crossing that we are asking for, or saying that it's probably necessary, mm -hmm. that we would have to, at our own cost, uh, build out these, what was it referred to as? Ball boats. Ball boats. So I guess, Derek, I guess maybe you should comment on that. It's, it's just basically the wish of council if you would want the engineering department to submit a design for approval to MIT in the case it's approved with maybe some changes that they have. They are going to send us templates for their designs. Uh, it's basically does council want us to spend the time to do that and submit. And upon that approval, then we get costs. Uh, council Morio. Uh, I read the letter. Um, while it's encouraging that they agree that a crosswalk is required or is feasible there, um, the location that they picked, plus the conditions of having those ball boats, to me is, for a better word, stupid. Um, is that a better word? <laughs> <laughs> uh, putting out ball boats in the parking lane at, at that intersection is just going to create a more hazard for people accidentally driving up on those uh, things. It's going to create uh, snow clearing issues. Um, also, we have water main or, or rain, rain gutters are right at that intersection, so putting ball boats is going to affect the redesign of the whole gutter system on that intersection. So I think we, um, if they're hard set on these ball boat things, that we push to move that to the next intersection on the other side of KFC where I don't believe or I didn't see any of the storm drains right in the intersection like they are right on both sides of the street there. At the it, it does state the, the reason they do require the bull boats and that is due to the, the, the width, width of the road. Of the road. Like it's, a four, Which, it's six lane now. Right. And, but but down the, on the other side of 12th, the width wouldn't get any shorter. Uh, the width would still be the same, but we won't have the issues of if we create those bull boats. Oh, I see. Um, where now that the ball boat's going to block the flow of water going into the storm drains, and we would find that when we're designing, we would submit, we would submit those issues. I guess we could we could propose to them. I guess if I, I could contact them to see if they'd be willing to to accept a proposal without boats and see I, what they say. I just think putting those ball boats on there is just it's going to create an accident. Someone's going to be coming along there, and it's. They're going to be driving up on that curb or affect the parking, so it's, just, it's going to create more issues than what we're solving. I guess, could you give us time to recommend to council options on what we could respond with? Totally acceptable. Oh. Yeah, I, I, like I don't know what these ball bolts actually work like, and actually, like um, Council Morio said, you know, is that going to cause some problems as far as traffic and and, yeah, we, and all that? Like, yeah, maybe we, in a lower, maybe in a lower. Uh, uh, volume of traffic area that might work but in an area like that where you have a lot of traffic moving that might just make things really confusing yeah we did just receive the letter today so if we had some time to I guess mull it over and uh, and look at some potential issues and and recommend some options to council I think it's a step in the right direction as far as public safety goes you know and, and our pedestrians so uh, it's uh, at least they, they realize that there is a, a need for it so if we can come back with some kind of a, a counter proposal of some kind or see how we can work with them. <coughs> All right, uh, we'll move on to reports, the Superintendent of Works report. Any questions to Derek on that? Councilor Morio? Um. The capital project at the treatment, the water treatment plant, that's all been uh, completed and running well? Yeah, the new pumps were installed. Uh, everything went well. The, the town staff, uh, they, manned, they manned the site 24-7, so to make sure if any potential issues started up, the guys did a really good job. The contractor did an excellent job. They stayed on schedule. Uh, yeah, there's a thank you in today's paper to the residents for for uh, the conservation effort, which allowed us to get through this without any issues. 
so, so basically with these three new variable drive pumps, the brand new wells, that's all there. We've got endless reliable water source now. <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice to get some monitoring and uh, isolation out at the well sites, but uh, that's in the queue. We're light years of where we were. Yeah, they, yeah we are. Any other questions, Darren? <laughs> I guess uh, one question I had was that uh, um, the trenching for the connection for the Robley project, that went good? Uh, that was scheduled for today. The contractor didn't show I mean, oh. up. Supposedly, if the weather was bad, he wasn't going to make it, so uh, the weather must have been bad and they never left. Mm -hmm. Okay, Councillor uh, DeLore. Um, on the uh Instrumentation for the well site, that project is still scheduled to go ahead in the spring? It's still scheduled for the spring, yeah. We, had, we do have uh, a bit of a snag on our, our Manitoba Water Services Board grant, but uh, just pending that contract getting here, the notice to proceed to the contract. Did you work out some of the snag? Make any headway on it? No, not yet. I can't until the head engineer is back from Nova Scotia. He had a family emergency. Okay, so we have this resolution here in regards to the 703 Main Street uh, project there. So moved by Councillor Deloria, seconded by Councillor Morio. Resolved that the concrete wall on 703 Main Street that is adjacent to the neighboring property at 705 Main Street be removed to grade level. Following this course of action, no further action will be required with regards to the concrete remaining from the Valley Hotel will be required from Sapatoya Cree Nation in order to receive future building permits for this site. Any further discussion? Councillor Sacco. What happens if they remove it down to grade and then there's a water issue with the neighbors? Not our baby anymore, that's it? I think that the neighbors are going to do. So that's a question I have liability. Now, if the town is asking that, so is the town going to be liable for engineers saying just leave it as is and you're going to pay for that? Like I, like I say, uh, I've gone through a lot of arbitrating cases and some of the millions, and fortunately, the one who's taken the case, the ones that have been going out there and been successful, and having the party pay for it all is just a waste of money, a waste of <laughs> That's the question I have for the liability. So when, I, so when I first bought the property, I went and asked them, I want to buy your property too. Are you okay to uh, sell it? We um, uh, used to want a deal. Thought about it for a bit. Said, yeah, I'm going to stay in business for a few more years. And a few more years, maybe we will sell. You know, because they have their farming industry already going. So. I did offer it before I made an offer to buy this piece of property. You know, so I just don't like, like I said before, wasting my time. Uh, time we, want, we want you as neighbors. We're not going to have you as neighbors. Seriously, we, we welcome you as neighbors. So. Council Mario. Uh, so, so a question to Ms. Watkins. Um, a lot of this is based on your desire to have this brought down to, to grade. Um, would there be a commitment that if this is brought down to grade, any ramifications of it, like finding issues, um, would be at your cost and you accept that cost and have a written letter to Chief Janai at Sabbath Creek Nation um, addressing that. As long as they haven't made any structural damage to our foundation already, then we will seal it up and insulate and seal that so that uh, there shouldn't be a water issue in that crack. That's what we want. But if, if they took it to grade and that there is an issue there that was prior to or no, not caused by the this demolition of the Valley Hotel. Well, if it's caused by the demolition of the Valley Hotel. But if it they're, wasn't. They're like, liable. Like if, they, if there is something that isn't caused, well, I'm not going to blame them for something they didn't do. Absolutely. No, we're fair people. Uh, is that what you're saying? But yeah, like it's like if it was a pre existing issue. Correct. We, we don't foresee any issues. We aren't having any issues. We don't think there's any issues at all. 
this is almost going down the line of what the engineer had, uh, had recommended that a lawyer or an arbitrator have the neighbor sign on the dotted line that their their property is all good right now. Now what I'm what I'm proposing is we skip that step and that the two parties get together and have a a document amongst themselves that to move this forward and to be neighborly is that the wall will go down below grade. Um, if, it, if there's for these indemnities done up, say. Yeah, we're we're. But we're if you could sign on it and say, you know, if the engineer says he'll come back and say because he wants to be released and then apply too, right? Mm -hmm. If I he says he says just leave it as is, or if he decides to say contractor comes there and, and cuts it, then you're saying that's the gamble you're going to take. If it leaks, you're not going to come after me or come to one another. That's basically what it here what it down to that. That's what it is. So when you have an engineer uh, report already stating this leave as is and it's good and it's we we'll just build around it to make it look nice for uh, community members and house one and that's that's fine about ourselves too. Because we did have the same issue with uh, uh, our first property where we instead of building right up to the building itself, we moved this way two feet. That's made our building smaller. That's uh, of course, they passed away first, but that's an issue we had internally, like before even coming in. And he says it's six inches is my is uh, on our property and your property. Well, so the medium we did was we just built this way away from. I think there's a 18 inches, two feet buffer zone between ours and the late Bernie property, we just accommodate that. Okay, uh, so. <laughs> we have a resolution approved by me and Dave, but I don't. I don't think I can vote for that either. The, 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 the point that the chief brings up is a valid point. What about liability? We're recommending a course of action now. Who's going to be liable? I don't know what the right answer to this is. All you know, removing uh, removing the concrete entirely could have issues with the neighbor. Removing concrete down to grade level can create other problems too. This like you said, an arbitrator makes some of the decision. Is that what it comes down to? It'll come down, it comes down to a decision whether you have a recommendation from an engineer. The recommendation to myself reads regarding the east wall due to the possible negative effects of the neighboring building and the foundation and the current unknown liability of carrying out 7.8 of the zoning bylaw. In this case, the risk of failure far outweighs the probability of successful removal of the east wall. Therefore, we recommend the east wall at 703 Main Street stay in ground as a support structure for the neighboring building. Whether it's brought to the level or not, or, or ground level or not, are you willing, are you willing to get in are you willing to make that decision on your own, or do you want <laughs> another engineer's report on that outcome? Because the outcome so far is remove it or leave it at it as is, right? And the engineer's report that we've already got doesn't say modify, it says leave it as is. If we want a specific report to modify that wall, I'm guessing we either have to tell Sapitoyak to get that report to us, or we have to pay for it ourselves. <coughs> And because of the variances applied, applied for last time, was that fifteen thousand? We, we we made the building smaller and building this way. So we're accommodating the neighbor as much as possible on the neighbor's neighbor basically. And that itself costs sixty-five thousand dollars, as I said before, not including this report. That's cost. I don't know this report. But we're almost a hundred thousand here. Like how, how much money? How much more money am I have to? Uh, just hope to get a building going. I, I, I just don't think that the same thing that you just, uh, Councillor uh, yeah. Dory said, that we're not going to take any uh, responsibility for that, and I don't think that we should put that on the people of the town of Swan River. Yeah, so I wouldn't be able to vote for that resolution either. So, if you want to have some resolve out of this tonight, then somebody has to come up with something, otherwise, we have to move on. Well, can you a resolution that got defeated? 
<coughs> Humor me for one minute. There, <coughs> if somebody bought a piece of property, wanted to build a, a, you know, just a wall on their property line, would they be allowed to do that? At eight feet in the ground or above ground? Just let's say, let's say they bought that, that that was virgin land and they just wanted to build a, a wall there. Completely on their property. Completely on their property. Okay. Yeah. What? Could they do it? Yeah. Could they just build a wall? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think the setbacks are zero on. The, set, the setbacks are zero. <sighs> so, I, I think the setbacks are zero too. The setbacks are zero in the central, central, yeah. So. So the wall being there. So the wall the being there. So Saptoyek has the right to have a wall there if they want. If we could make them tear it down, and they could rebuild another wall there, right there, and there'd be nothing we could do about it. Yes. So I guess that really answers that argument. But there's cracks in this wall due to demolition. So it's hiding unknown conditions. I totally agree. They have the right to build a little wall there if they want. But that would be a new wall. This was an old pre-existing wall that was supposed to come out. But this cracks that's your property could have been there before and even before that. No, no, it's it's the, so the cracks were from removing the concrete beam during the demolition. The cracks were in the, in the in buried the, wall or in your wall? No, no, in the buried wall. It, it's the up, above ground portion. Mm -hmm. uh, We got to come to some resolve on this. We we we've hammered around this for over an hour, and uh, either we leave it the way it is, if the uh, client has to remove the wall entirely, that again I'm going to repeat is going to maybe uh, compromise the integrity of the neighboring uh, person, and do they want that? So in the, or is the town liable for that then? Well, and that's it. So it's our it's our bylaw that's forcing them to remove it. I guess we could look at it this way then. If we would agree to leave that portion of the wall, then we would require Sabatoya to sign a paper to us saying that if there are further damages to our building because of that crack, that they're liable to us. So it becomes liable from both sides because that wall's left. So as Chief, would you, would you guys be willing to sign a paper saying that there, if there's further damages to their building, that you'd be liable because that wall stays? Looked at their basement. I never inspected their basement before. It's like buying a new vehicle, right? And mm -hmm. you go down the road and you got a car accident, then uh, that vehicle was damaged already. And are you damaged? And when that damage is done, the previous owner. So that's 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 a kind of a question where it's mm -hmm. right. I mean, there was probably insurance claims reports done to like if the property owner came here before already and. It was there to say, you know, I had flood damage, I had this damage. Where's those reports? I, That's I, the first question. I think we're we're getting too deep. Council's getting too deep into no disrespect with their problems. <coughs> if our bylaws says remove it, Sabatoric has the responsibility to do it without damaging their neighbor's property. Now can that be even done? This engineer is saying, saying no. no. So that is what that's their basis of their whole argument. We, we cannot get into their problems. We need to stick to our bylaws. Are we going to tell them to remove the wall or not remove the wall? I think having it two feet above the ground and, uh, and having it ground level is their problem. <clears throat> so when, in my it's, when it's two feet there, you know, how is it going to rain? Is it going to rain that way all the time? If I'll reassure you it's going to rain this way all the time, it's not going to rain towards the building. If, <laughs> if the wall stays, whether it stays two feet above the ground, two feet below the ground, or at ground level, it's still staying. We're ten feet above ground level. 
the wall staying or it's getting removed. I think that's that's the decision that we have to make. And 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 on that, it, keep that in mind that we already have a resolution saying that we have accepted the fact that they are allowed to leave concrete in the ground on the north and the west side. So basically it's saying that we would allow them to leave concrete, in my opinion anyways, on the east side. So again, we, we got to come to something here. We just can't keep... I don't know how you can bring the resolution here. back that we already defeated. There is a procedure for bringing a resolution back that was defeated. Timely, what? Two weeks. It has, to, it has to be from one regular meeting to the next. It has to be from one. Uh, uh, uh. There, there, there's an or there. Do you, can you get the procedures by law? Mm -hmm. yeah. there, there's, there's two mechanisms for bringing a re resolution back. So, as it stands right now, with it being defeated, what does that leave my, myself trying to construct? Right now, as the, the, the resolution that was voted on, it was a tie vote. Yeah. A tie vote means it's defeated. Yeah. So that means that you have to abide by what the bylaw says. The bylaw says that you must remove that piece of concrete on that adjacent That's to the uh, neighboring uh, property owner. That's the grade. No, entirely. Entirely. This now, is why some of the liability comes into play. Well, the, yeah, that's cause. why the members of council you were talking about bringing forth a different resolution yeah. to consider grade, okay, at grade. But then you brought up the point where who's taking on the liability of if anything happens because of that act. And he, and he has a pretty strong argument now because he's got a recommendation saying not to do that. Right. So he's got it. He's got his. I guess technically the liability was with them all the time because they're the one demolishing the building. And Actually, that like the Thomas Wander when I first bought it, please thought <laughs> that is all. So just want to ask the question. Well, any any property, regardless of its purchase, its derelict building or yeah. a building that's burned down to the ground or whatever houses commercial property and all that, if, if a person uh, has a building like that and it burns down, let's say, well, they have by order by the town of Swan River bylaws say they must remove any concrete out of the ground. Must. So when I ask the question, what's the value of your property? I don't know, sir. So to, to reconsider the uh, Decision section 139 1 a council may not reconsider or reverse a decision within one year after it is made unless at the same meeting, which are at the same meeting, at which the decision is made, all members who voted or are present, or if a member gives written notice to council from one regular meeting to the next. So we would fit within A if we wanted to reconsider, which. Avoids the liability if we, by, if we accept it. By us getting, making him get this recommendation, we've made his case for him. Absolutely. Because if we go our way, then we're the liable ones. What? what? Saving, protecting the taxpayers. Or leaving the wall there entirely, as it is recommended. Yeah, the best case scenario is leave it as is, that's based on the recommendation by an engineer. I'm not an engineer. I trusted in the engineer and you know when I asked a question to the engineer, I never had any thoughts. It was basically say give me something. Give me this opinion. Because their opinion is based on their certified staff. And you know, like, <coughs> certified staff basically says, you know, Mr. Poole tells me this and basically that's what I gotta do it because that's what they're Sure to do, right? Okay, so, <coughs> so worship. I'm willing to put a motion forward that the existing the, the, the resolution that we uh, that was tied that tied that got defeated requiring uh, the removal of the wall 
um, stands, but I can bring in, uh, I'll bring another motion forward that notwithstanding that one, if there is a, uh, a joint written agreement between the two parties as recommended by the engineer comes forward that that written agreement will supersede the removal of the entire wall. And then that puts it back in the two parties where the engineer suggested. And then it leaves it up to the two parties to do their risk. I, you know what, Louise, Louise, I know that you, you, you want to add it, and I think your, your input is good, but at the same time, like we don't have an open discussion on it, and I think that it's, it's starting to get complicated by council being, we've got to make a decision. And, I, and I, I'm not saying that your input is not valuable, but I think at some point in time, we, we, we just have to make a decision here. So how do we bring that back? But it, it wasn't an independent engineer, we weren't consulted, so the questions were all asked by one person, not by both parties. So in that respect, uh, the engineer answered questions that were asked of him in a certain way. So, and I'm done. Okay, so Council Morio. I can bring that forward. If that's, you can bring whatever you choose forward as long as you have a, a seconder. Uh, Councilor DeLoria, how do you get that one back? We, so I guess uh, someone makes a motion to, to bring this back. Okay. Who, who does that? You could. The mover and the seconder. Okay, I'm okay with that. No, you can make a new motion. Oh, okay. okay. Also, who's the seconder? That one. Jason. Okay. Yeah. So we have two competing resolutions being drafted here. I don't know, just go. Uh, they're not gonna go for that one. I'm almost thinking that, you know, you can rescind that. Uh, or, or however it's gone, but if it's, if, we, if we're at a stalemate here, then it's just going to have to be left for the next council. Well, I'll do a little vote again here right away. Oh. Or an arbitrator? You're, you're, you're mentioning an arbitrator? And that's the question, like, if you're forcing me to do that, liability comes to play ask the question <coughs> and all of a sudden if I ask the question what's the value of your property and if it's two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand is it a pound or me because I, I know I'm being forced to do that so I was to move on to what you're following basically. So we have an engineer saying just leave us this, nothing's happening right now to confirm that this is happening to the neighbor. And everything's fine. And variances we, we remove are basically making it smaller and made this way. It's not screw piles. And we accommodate, is there a way possible to accommodate the bylaws and also the neighbor? And I don't want to go to next steps when we start to develop. Uh, we, there, while they're writing up that resolution, I'm going to keep on moving along here. Um, we finished off on superintendent of works. We're going to move on to the work crew supervisor report. That's something new. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I spotted uh, something in there that I found interesting, uh, Derek. A resident tree was removed and transferred to dump as requested. Did you do that? I would have to consult Patty on exactly which tree that was. But, uh, I'm not sure that's a service we provide. I don't think uh, we would move a, remove a private tree if it did. It didn't come from me. Yeah. So uh, I have one. If you want another one, <laughs> can you find out about that, Julie? <laughs> one thing I'm disappointed to see here, and then we know that's a big problem, is that is the ongoing needle 
issue Thank that you. we have in this community, and I'm sure others have too, but it's pretty sad to see that uh, that's an ongoing issue. It's not getting better. Councillor, I just Reason. have a question for Derek. I meant to ask you before. On 13th, do you know where Dwight Thompson is? Nope. Give me a number. <laughs> Rami's office. Yeah. yeah. Back lane, Dwight Thompson. Gotcha. Okay, there was a big strip of something that didn't get done there, like left dirt, and I'm wondering if. On the back lane? Right on 13th. Oh. Maybe if you're out driving around, just go and have a look at it. Like in front of Ronnie's? Uh, on 13th. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. There's a planned parking lot there. So okay, we. Okay, she's done that, and then there's a back lane that goes behind her place. Well, that's. And then white. That's technically not a back lane, that's her property. She's allowed vehicles to go Okay, through. so this, this is right by the curb, right by the sidewalk. Okay. And it's just. I don't know what it's supposed to be. And he just said, did they forget to do something here when they did the sidewalk? So, okay, if I'm you get the tents, just I'll go and have a... Take a look. Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, I guess I can't go on. Well, I guess we don't need counselor. We don't want to hear about that. Are we done? Moved by Councillor Deloria, seconded by Councillor Deloria, resolved that the Superintendent of Works report be received. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Moved by Councillor Deloria, seconded by Councillor Deloria, resolved that the work crew supervisor report be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? You see the handy van report there. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Resolved that the handy van report for September the 2018 be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, the fire department report, you see that for September. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen, resolved that the Swan River Fire Department report for September 2018 be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Management meeting, are, you want to be, are we ready for this now? Okay, so the first resolution is to bring back the defeated by tie resolution, uh, number 439. So moved by Councillor Deloria, second by Councillor White, resolved that the resolution number 2018-439 be reconsidered. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Do you want to read, sir, what that resolution was for those of us who may have forgotten? That's what he's going to do right now. Right, right here. Right there. Okay. That's a new one. This is, this is, this is the to reconsidered one. That's what I wanted to read. Well, I need signatures on this one here. I'm going to read it right now. This is it again. I need a second draw on that. So this is the resolution that was defeated by tie, okay? So moved by Councillor Deloria, second by Councillor White, resolved that the concrete wall located on 703 Main Street remains standing as recommended in the report provided by Edifice Engineering Incorporated. 
discussion. Yeah, I'll, you know, I guess I'm probably, I'm reconsidering my earlier position and I'll, and I'll let, let everyone know why. The fact that when we went down the, you guys humored me and allowed me to go down the trans thought that a wall separate away, you know, I, I'm a strong believer in property rights of the owner. I mean, owner's property rights, you should be able to do with, on your land what you can you can build whatever you if you want to build a one foot wall that sticks out of the ground and I guess the the argument that it isn't a new wall it may have cracks if you wanted to build ten little walls with an inch gap between them which would have the same effect as these cracks you'd be allowed to do that too it might you know it, you may think well, it's silly who's going to build that but I mean if you have the right to do it you have the right to do it. So I guess that that's probably the biggest reason why I re reconsidered my position. Okay. So all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Now we have this other resolution here. What do we have here? You have resolution number. This one. this one probably can be withdrawn. Mm -hmm. True. It doesn't need to be <coughs> I'm the seconder, I'll, I'll withdraw it. David or Council Morial, are you wanting to res withdraw this resolution? So this resolution number here, this is one. This is the same thing. Okay, so moved by Councilor Morio, second by Councilor Delorier, be resolved that resolution number 2018-441 be set aside provided that the Sapatoya Cree Nation and the owners of 705 Main Street come to a written agreement regarding the remaining foundation on the east side of 703 Main Street as recommended by Darren Eady from E to, four, e, e to Vice Engineering Incorporated, letter dated September the 18th, 2018. Okay, so just so I got the mechanics of this street, if this resolution passes and the, they're able to come to an agreement, that that resolution we just passed would be set aside, so to speak. But now what incentive is there for Savage Way to come to an agreement when we just told them to go ahead? Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Sorry, can I see who was opposed again? Opposed. Okay. So that means that it's uh, defeated. All right, so moving on to our agenda. It's for clarity now, because there are so many emotions. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what the hell happened? Where, where, where we're at? Ever? Council has is decided that it's going to leave it as it is. Because okay. I have to go to the hospital, I guess, one of my, uh, uh, I don't know, my son-in-law, his son-in-law is going to a vehicle accident down the road. So. Oh. Okay. That's an hour, 15 minutes ago, so I guess Thank you for your patience. down the road down there, so. Thank you for your okay. patience. Thanks yeah. for coming in. All right, so moving on, uh, the management uh, meetings. So any questions with that regards to Julie? Oh, sorry, uh, Councilor Sacco. I had a question on that one piece there, on Mike's fancy wordage on the uh, septic tanks in the soccer fields to just like just back just backtrack them basically because they were full or because they thought the season was over. Uh, no, just clean them out and okay. let the these small ones done too. <coughs> All right. 
Moving on, uh, reports. See uh, council reports. Mr. Sacco. Uh, not too much to report. Um, I was part of a, uh, I guess when my, my daughter was part of a student exchange program uh, through the high school where 22 students came here from Elgin, Ontario and stayed here for one week. And then uh, in May, May 26, 22 of our students are going to go there to their community and spend one week. It was, uh, it was very enlightening, very entertaining um, to see these students uh, come to our town and see what it was like here, you know, many miles away. The Elgin, Ontario is just an hour, I think, east of Ottawa, so it's, it's quite, quite a haul to get here. Uh, our committee, or the committee that uh, it was through the high school to experience Canada, so mostly federally funded. Each student had to raise a little bit of money to, uh, to be a part of it. Um, Mrs. Gady at the high school, I believe, spearheaded this. Not an easy thing to get accepted into. Um, the committee then decided and the parents what they were going to do with these children as they came to our community for a week. How could they showcase our, our community? And, and uh, these students are grade 9, 10, 11 that were here. So the, the first day, I guess on the Monday, they picked them up in the airport in Winnipeg. Uh, spent two days in Winnipeg, just basically the one night because they got there in the evening. They stayed at Camp Manitou. They needed a place to stay that had a housing for everybody. They had a great time there. It was a great, uh, great complex. It's owned by True North. There's everything from rock wall climbing to archery. The kids uh, had some you know, ice breaking events and they had a, just a great time. Next day they went to the Human Rights Museum in Winnipeg and down to the Forks and then carried on to the valley here Tuesday evening got here late in the night. Wednesday the committee took them to uh, Minotonis area where they toured Rins Eckhart Rinsdorf's bee farm. They said it was absolutely amazing uh, what he does out there. They toured, uh, did a little tour of LP, Mr. Windsor, Steve Windsor took them through and then they toured a, a lady's farm um, and then seen how a combine operates. And it's a little different geography than here. Thursday they ended up going to school with our students, uh, did some pierogi pinching for, for a potluck supper, learned how to make a pierogi. A lot of these kids never heard of what a pierogi is. Living in a fairly Ukrainian town, uh, you know, everybody in, in the valley pretty much knows what a pierogi is. Most of these kids never seen or heard of what one was, so that was kind of neat. Um, and then that evening they had an amazing race which took them all over town from the library to the museum and a few different places, and the kids absolutely loved it. Uh, Friday they went to Wellman Lake, did a tour, uh, trail Copernicus Hill, uh, did some uh, fishing just at the United Church Camp, spent the day there, uh, was, was very well received and then in the evenings went to one of the parents, host parents place and, and just had an evening on their own. Saturday they spent the morning with uh, at the Elber Chartrand uh, Friendship Center where they learned how to make bannock, uh, dream catchers, and uh, Mr. Gary Wolchuk put on a uh, kind of a history of, of the area uh, for the students. So Sunday night, uh, Saturday night, we ended up taking them to the St. Peter hockey game, which uh, was, a, was a good event as well. And then Sunday, we kind of capped it off with a potluck supper. And uh, through this time, I got to sit with, they brought three chaperones from this, this small community of 400 people is Elgin, Ontario, and oh, yeah, it's, it's very small. So they, uh, the surrounding community is quite large and it's, it's right on the Reno Canal, and it's a very touristy summer place, but the actual community itself is quite small. And uh, they've been involved, the one is a retired school teacher, he's been involved, they've been picked, and they said once you get into the system, um, it's easy to keep staying in the system. So our school got picked this year. He said, make sure you apply again next year because chances of you getting approved are probably are probably a lot better. So he said, I've been doing this for 15 years consecutively. They went with different students, obviously, as kids get older. So he's gone everywhere from Prince Edward Island, he said, all the way to BC and everywhere in between, 15 different trips. He said, one thing that stand out in your community he said, is the hospitality and the support. 
They stay at the uh, condos that Joel Delore has, I believe free of charge. Former motor supplied vehicles, numerous businesses supplied meals, uh, transportation, um, hockey tickets, you name it. He said, we've gone places, but nowhere like this. He said, and, and I'm not saying this, he said, this is true. He said, the community support, your business support, in your whole valley was unbelievable. He said, it's unprecedented, never seen anything like it. Usually the kids go to school with the other kids, they go home to the other parents in the evening. He said, you had us moving the whole time, and the different things, and a huge support. They were just gave us kudos over top of kudos. We just couldn't believe it. So that just makes, you know, reiterates how great of community we have here and you know don't dwell on the negatives dwell on the positives like there's just so much to do here and it's such a great community and the people here are just outstanding so I just thought that council should hear that that's a good report other than that I could not make the G5 last night just do the other commitments so. okay council Friesen don't make me follow that well somebody has to <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I just had a library meeting and um, a G5 meeting last night. Excellent supper, uh, some good conversation around the table, and uh, Jason's daughter came into the store with the kids, and it's uh, nice, really nice kids, very polite, very pleasant, where's this, where's that, and hey Phil, where's this? Is your daughter. <laughs> anyway, I'm done. Council White. Uh, I think, uh, Jason, please thank your committee on behalf of all of us at the table because obviously they got the job done and I think of the work a bunch of you guys did for the doctor recruiting. Those things don't just happen. Somebody's went to a lot of energy to make it happen. So thank you so much. Uh, just want to let outdoors let you know was organizing a banquet again. They put $30,000 into our town and our valley last year. And that's coming up on the 20th of October. I went to the Boundaries Commission meeting in Dauphin, uh, Councilor Morio and uh, Mayor McKenzie, and that was interesting and we'll stay optimistic. Glenn did a good job in his presentation. Another safe house meeting and the girls remain optimistic that things will happen or we'll be able to help uh, people in need. Uh, and then I went to a business consortium meeting uh, organized by the co-op. And some of the things they were looking at was loss prevention in the community and businesses. There's not a business, LP for example, the brick for example, that doesn't have issues with losses. They also talked about cannabis and how that's going to impact the different corporations when it comes in. Then I went that evening, I went to the CMHA annual general meeting and boy those people do a lot of wonderful things for the community. They, uh, they reach out to people in need and again the number one in four has uh, significant mental issues from anxiety to whatever, so that's two of us in the room, myself included. And then I also went to Big Daddy Taz, uh, presented by CMHA. There's a couple hundred people there, and his message was to uh, how to deal with mentally challenged people. Now we're all equal, regardless of our abilities, and to care and love, and just to like people, be nice. So it's certainly a, it's a wonderful thing what CMHA has been doing in our community and will continue to do. And the G5 meeting last night, it's certainly nice to get together with our peers and other municipal entities. They certainly have different issues uh, than we do often as a town, but they solve them collaboratively and uh, I think it's a good start to continue where we work with the other G5 and projects for the Valley as a whole. Thank you. Council Morio. Um, this period I uh, attended with uh, Mayor McKenzie and Councillor White, the Boundaries Commission meeting in Dauphin where uh, Mayor McKenzie presented a submission on behalf of the entire valley to the commission. Um, they acknowledged some of the issues along with uh, Dauphin, um, concurred with a lot of our issues, uh, but they had a little different take on um, how the boundary should be. Um, so we'll see what the commission comes up with December 1st when they put out the recommendation to the province. Um, I also attended uh, um, a consultant report here, WSP, on the arena um, regarding some of the issues that we're having there with the shifting or lifting of the ice surface and whatnot, and uh, a prioritized report of what repairs need to be done and within, starting immediately in the next five years um, timeline, along with options. Um, I also attended a personnel uh, 
committee meeting with one of our staff who wanted to uh, have a chat with us with some suggestions and concerns. Um, also attended with Councillor White and some other individuals the CMHA Big Daddy Taz presentation at the Legion Hall, which was great, uh, where he presented uh, um, some of the mental health issues that are challenged uh, by a lot of the public that a lot of people don't know and some coping mechanisms and stuff like that. And uh, one of the biggest cures for it is laughter and encourage people to laugh every day um, to help with that. Um, I also attended the uh, Valley in the Mountain uh, Valley in the Mountains uh, meeting um, last Thursday where uh, they started some discussions on some uh, various trail signage and some other projects that <coughs> looking to go to promote, promote tourism in the valley along with uh, starting the discussion and uh, the ball rolling on the new uh, magazine uh, promoting the valley. And Lastly, last night I had a G5 meeting uh, hosted by Birch River, um, a very good meal and again um, a lot of topics were discussed there, sometimes some of them not related to the town of Swan River but uh, we have sometimes bring topics that not relate to the others but it's an avenue for discussion where we can come to consensus and share ideas. So. Uh, it's something that's unique uh, that we have because compared to a lot of other jurisdictions in the province so um, it's a good thing to have, so that's all I got. Okay, thank you. Councillor Delore. Um, attended a uh, Parks and Rec Committee meeting earlier today. Uh, fairly mundane stuff. I guess the only thing of, of note is I guess the committee is looking at uh, at dead times at the arena and trying to, I guess, get some efficiencies in our in our staff scheduling there. So uh, there's probably going to be a, a recommendation coming forward as far as uh, how, to, how to better utilize the arena um, as far as uh, times that it's open and times that it's not. Um, also from last night's G5, I just wanted to touch on something that was brought up by the school division, I guess with the provincial review coming up um, for all of education. And normally I, I, we usually take the, the stand that you know we have a school board that looks after education concerns in the valley and uh, and you know we, we don't, don't usually get too involved but I think in this case they're going to be looking at everything including governance issues and including getting rid of local control of school boards and I think or possibly even amalgamation um, I think both those things would not be of a benefit to us we, we, what we went through with uh, healthcare when Dauphin called all the shots I can't imagine that being good for us in education. So I think uh, there's going to be an opportunity for uh, for the public to put uh, put uh, vo their voice to some of the issues, and uh, I think we're going to have to lobby, uh, start lobbying on some of those things, making sure that uh, that we retain some local control. Um, the only other thing uh, on the 18th, I guess, attended the uh, the. Uh, arena report and I'm assuming we're going to be getting a public report that will accept at council then we'll be able to make the findings of that report public but I think uh, I think we're probably eager to make those findings public and uh, start the discussion on, on the issues at the arena. Um, other than that, that's it for me. Julia? Um, I attended a work meeting and uh, you noted that um, there was a report from the work crew supervisor. So um, we'll be having those come to council regularly, regularly from now on. Uh, preparing for an airport commission meeting this week. It's happening on Thursday morning. I attended the G5 meeting last night. Uh, I sent um, the ad to the paper for the board of revision that's scheduled for the November 20th uh, meeting. The deadline for appeals for assessment is November the 5th. And um, just a reminder of the Canadian Rangers meeting happening on October the 15th at the Veterans Community Hall from 7 till 9. That's it. All right, well, for me, uh, basically, it's kind of. I've been in a lot of different circles where everybody's already uh, mentioned already. So, uh, other than that, I had one of my first official duties, I guess, uh, since the mayor's away, 
I attended the CMHA Echo 4 grand opening uh, last Thursday. So you know, we know that Canadian Mental Health Association and our Swan Valley branch with you know Marvin and his group, they do outstanding work in the community. And some of the stuff that they do, uh, uh, that they talked about, and I'm not going to get into all of it, but they deal with a lot of uh, things and issues with people and helping people. So they, they do a good service to our community and, and uh, they need to be congratulated. And with, you know, the ECHO, uh, you know, um, two that they had built here, then of course the ECHO four now just opening up, uh, which is offering um, affordable <coughs> housing for people in that tr transitional uh, need, I guess you can say. So they are uh, helping those that uh, definitely need uh, help. So. Other than that, uh, I guess we could move on to our agenda and uh, I guess the, the checks here. So, moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen, resolved that the accounts is here by full uh, approved for payment. General accounts from check number 23150 to number 23237 for a total of $517,798.80. And payroll accounts from check number 4310 to 4320 for a total of $143,427.02. Any discussion? Councillor Morial. Um, this check number 0023176, uh, Maple Leaf Construction, and the amount of $237,990. Uh, Derek, you might be able to help me here. Um, and this is a result to the uh, curb and gutter and asphalt paving. Um, did we require them to do any additional work as based on the tenders? Like, is there was a cost plus or add-ons to that? That uh, um, based on the check that we issued to them last month, um, combining these two checks, were one hundred and ninety-two thousand over what we passed the resolution for. Because we passed a resolution for four hundred and thirty dollars or four hundred thirty thousand one hundred dollars um, to deal with level and asphalt survey, curb and gutter, and mobilization for those three projects, and those two checks amount to five hundred thirty thousand one ninety two. There, we know we knew that there was going to be overages on the project when they were here. The majority of it is uh, base work. Uh, on 13th Avenue North and 12th and 3rd. Uh, so, so, so what? 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 What in the base work would put them over? Like, there's the tender for for an amount to do the base work. So, right. whether they cost more for it, that's to me is well their problem. We included the the surveying mm -hmm. in that tender. Right. So they had to make sure that water ran, everything was good. So I did provide them with our proposed curbs where we built the, the grade to, but we we do our surveying with a chain and a level. So I handed him my book and he, he went, well, we don't work in 1999 stuff. We have a base station. It would take me hours to load this information into a computer. To, they basically threw out my, so our proposed curbs and had to redo the elevations of the curbs which affected the base elevations, which required hauling. And uh, the, reason, the, the main reason for the overage is the surveying issue. So we tendered with them to include the surveying, so... Uh, what yeah, it's not, it's not the actual surveying. The, the issue was the surveying issue, which caused <coughs> a base, base elevation issue. So the, the proposed elevation, which we built to, could not could not work, I guess, with, with what their elevations were. They, they, didn't, they couldn't use what we had. We, they, they, we did tell them to keep the curbs as, as absolutely low as possible to limit the amount of landscaping we had to do in the front yards, especially on 12th. But uh, there was a considerable amount of base that had to be removed from 13th and 12th in order to hit the lowest curb level possible. The year before, when we did all the base work, we built up too high, is what you're saying? Yep. <clears throat> Compared to those curb elevations, I had my curb elevations higher. So how can we prevent that in the future? Uh, well, force them to use our system, but like we were using, it's on paper, so they're, 
No, he does. We, we, like we're using archaic surveying or? stuff. We have, like we have asked for a, a, a base station and, and to where we can use AutoCAD with our surveying, and we just hand them a USB stick and. So we, next time, if we were to redo redo this, would we not tender the whole even redoing the base work as, as a whole package? Just make to, would they even do that? They have a base curve, yeah. So would it not be better to have it? basically hand them the whole project, like even though it would be over two years. In this case, yeah, it would have been advantageous because I'm sure the savings wouldn't amount to $100,000. So the, there was, it, I'm not done my financial review that cap, capital project, that's the majority of the overage. The other, the other overage is uh, the amount of, of asphalt used in patching operations. So it was a per ton basis and, and the patching operations were, I believe, over triple what we've paid in the past, so we did want to limit that as much as we could. The, the triple the quantity or triple the price? Price. So with Maple Leafs Tender overall, we got a very good price, and we've got some very considerable savings, especially on the local improvement, since that's a set fee, and regardless of the tenders, those people are paying a set fee. We got really good prices on the on the tender of that, so there's significant savings which will cover these overages, and uh, it's unfortunate for the local improvement, but that's the way the bylaw changed, so that these people would not rely on an estimate when the tender processes for their amounts to change. They wanted to know what they 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 were going to pay. The downside of that is when we get extremely good prices, they pay more. So to prevent this. In the future, Derek, like with surveying and stuff, is um, basically we need to upgrade our antiquated survey equipment to the modern survey equipment. Yes, and we could have we we paid for the survey equipment just with this. We did. So that was the that was the a main error right off the bat that that they showed up and uh, and they could not use our. Our surveying information. They did tie into existing curbs and and basically put it as low as possible. We had ours of the catch basins would have been just as you know. And did they make that known right off the bat, or was that? Uh, they didn't start the work until I approved. But if I would have said no and wait for council, they would have left, and maybe they'd be here oh. next week. You know how that? That's just how it it goes. I had to make that decision that uh, there would be cost overruns. They couldn't tell me how much it was. They did tell me they had to lower the, the base elevation, haul it away, and there'd be extra costs. Okay, any other further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? I will have a report on that capital project, including all the financial breakdowns. So give me another heart attack. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Freeze, and resolved that Sierra Makasoff and Amelia Real be hired as part-time lifeguards, effective September the 30th, 2018. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay. Moved by Councillor Delore, second by Councillor Morio, resolved that the following building permits applications be received. Zen and Nichiporak, 406 7th Avenue North, a deck. Roy Suddenberg, uh, removal of a deck at 225 9th Avenue North. Loren Krishner, 222 5th Avenue South, replace the fence. Dorothy Pierce, 1250 Main Street, install six signs. Synergy, it says uh, Rod Stadnick, 224 1st Avenue South, the garden shed. Jason Sackle, 12 Vivian Street, chain link security fence. Cardinal Signs Limited, 473 Westwood Road, a pile on the sign. Albert Othway, 506 uh, Duncan Crescent, a fence. Kirk Rapstead, 326 Avenue South, a shed. Riverview Condos, 505 Kelsey Trail, Phase 3 per plants. Cardinal Signs Limited, 1412 Main Street, automated message system. Darren McKay, 313 13th Avenue South, crawl space. For a discussion, that was one thing that I was wondering. What do you need a permit for a crawl? What's that crawl space? It's a basement. Is that what that is? You know? Yeah, that's what he dug. It's, it's, yeah. it's his basement. Okay. So. 
Discussion? I've got a question. All in favor? Oh, oh sorry, Councilor. Uh, <coughs> Dorothy Pierce, the Synergy Signs. Is that the uh, gas station at Extra Foods location? Yeah, so they just replaced the signs on the top. And now, correct me if I'm wrong, if we were just replacing a sign on a, like an existing sign on a building, that we didn't require a building permit. Or am I wrong on that? They didn't do any structure changes, they more or less just changed the sign. No, there was one sign on the south side, I believe, or possibly. Okay. I can't remember what was existing. I know that yeah, there was the addition that of, yeah. of signs all the way around. I know Ron came to me with that one. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure that we're not charging for something that we had the discussion already with other... It was similar to a fence, correct? No, we had this issue over at the gym, Boychuk's gym. Right. Mm -hmm. Right, where we, we made the bylaw the same as the fence. If you're just replacing a sign, you're not. Yeah, but there's also there's also some wording of, of whether a sign is flat to the building or if it was sticking out. Yeah, I'd have to review the bylaw yeah. and get back to you yeah. to make sure that everything was on the up and up. But I'm, yeah. I know Ron came to me with this one. Okay. But I will get back to you. You can just double check it because I don't want to. Yeah. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Moved by Councillor Fries and second by Councillor Sackle resolved that the Swan Lake Watershed Conservation District September 27, 2018 meeting, meeting minutes be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Moved by Councillor Fries and second by Councillor Sackle resolved that the annual contribution to the Swan Valley Health Foundation Health Fund sorry, Swan Valley Health Facility Foundation Incorporated for the Doctor Retention and Recruitment Fund of $16 per capita in the amount of $64,224 be approved for payment. Discussion. This is the exact amount we budgeted in the financial plan? I'm, I'm not sure. I'd have to double check on that. Terry, Terry and I. Where did that figure come from then? Um, Terry figured out the um, the amount based on what we had figured out for 2017, um, and our resolution stated all the municipalities' resolutions stated that we would be uh, contributing, you know, up to six sixteen dollars per capita. And when we did it in 2017, there was um, 155,000 was the max that we wanted to put in as a whole, you know, as the whole group of municipalities. And um, of course, the uh, the census, you know, has changed. The population has changed since then. Um, so it's it's changed a little bit. We're not going to be contributing as a whole. Um, 155,000, I think, it works out to be almost 151,000 this time. So that's why he went with and. We had talked. We went back and forth a little bit today on it, but we went with the sixteen dollars. It was fifteen dollars and eighty nine cents, I believe, the per capita for two thousand seventeen. So, have the other municipalities paid their amount? Um, I, I'm not sure. Not we're sure. going to we're going to send out the spreadsheet to them just to make sure that you know it spurs their payments as well. Do we normally pay it this late in the year? Um, yeah. Yeah? We usually do, yeah. Where does that show up in the uh, financial plan? Oh, good question. Health and social services. Yeah, I can't see it in there. Oh, yeah, right there. Medical log, yeah. Okay, that's so exactly 64224. Okay. okay. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. <laughs> Moved by Councillor Fries and seconded by Councillor Sackle, whereas the 2018 capital budget included $335,000 for asphalt based curb and gutter, $200,000 of which would be borne by the Federal Gas Tax Reserve, and $135,000 of which would be borne by the Water and Sewer Reserve. And whereas costs incurred to date for the asphalt base curb and gutter total 
$315,531.04 in the general operating fund and $166,171.64 in the utility operating fund. Be it hereby resolved that $200,000 be transferred from the Federal Gas Tax Reserve Fund to the general operating fund and that the $135,000 be transferred from the Water and Sewer Reserve Fund to the Utility Operating Fund. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, so we have a letter request from the Senior Citizens Center that we had further discussion on. So I, then this is to do with the a grant to cover the cost of the permit of a thousand and thirty-five. So I'll read the resolution. Do you have a question? Well, yeah, because at the end of last meeting we had asked Derek to. There was some confusion between whose responsibility it was, and he was going to talk to the OFC. And yeah. I was just wondering if they, we had made any headway in that regards. Nothing with the OFC, but Ron has been instructed not to issue any permits that aren't our responsibility, regardless of what the OFC tells us to do. So that change has been done, but the OFC is still getting back to us on exactly if they can do that. Also, uh, Manitoba Culture, Heritage, Tourism and Sport is inquiring on the exact same question because they are providing the grant for this project and we are getting conflicting answers from the OFC. So there is inquiries from the province and the town of Swan River to the OFC with this exact issue. So uh, right now Ron has a directive that if they, if they were to come in tomorrow he wouldn't require them to have a permit. If it's the OFC's jurisdiction, it stays the OFC's yeah. jurisdiction. So, but if the senior center comes was to come in tomorrow, he wouldn't have to ask them for a permit. So, rather than give them a grant, then should we not take or send the permit? Yeah, they paid for the permit. Yeah, we'd we'd have to give them their money back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I'm thinking, like you're better off just to refund the permit. Whatever the wish of, of council, we we can find out if the OFC can do, or I don't know what policies they they have to get back to us on on what they've done or what their inspectors told us to do. But uh, but if if we rescind the permit, that means that they did the work without a permit, no less. Right, but we don't require a permit, right? If they were to come in tomorrow, they could still do the work without a permit. Mm -hmm. But to protect the senior citizen group, they were instructed by OFC to come to the town to get their permits. So, so you're saying that possibly the inspector's boss, if we were send this, could say that you started with a permit. Now you're going to pay the permit plus a penalties and stuff like that. Versus this way, to protect the seniors, they were directed by the OFC to come to get their permit here. And if we just grant them back their money, that protects them back. Like we still have the issue to solve with the OFC. Yeah. But the OFC can't go back on the seniors and say, "Now you need to cough up money for a permit with us." I can, like, I can poke around and, like, we'll be talking to those supervisors, I'm sure, shortly. But uh, then I, I wait until we get some sort of resolution on on who's responsible for the permit. I mean, either way, they're gonna. Yeah. Did Did you end up talking to Mr. Clark and reassuring him that we're going uh, into no, this? I couldn't get a hold. I left a message. But. So, uh, if, if the will is to table this, then I need that from the, the uh, mover and second. second. <coughs> and Who's that's that? uh, Morio and Dorian. Yeah, I'll second it. Table it. Okay. I'll do a resolution. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, don't be breathing on me. <laughs> <laughs> there, it says don't move any. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
touch your cord. Mm. Like my cord. Whose cord is it? It's just my cord. Moved by Councillor Morial, seconded by Councillor Delory, resolve that resolution number 2018-448 be tabled. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Moved by Councillor Sackles, seconded by Councillor Friesen, resolve that pursuant to section 152-3 of the Municipal Act Council go to the committee and close the meeting to the public. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried.